SavvyBusinessRadio.com, we help business owners connect to successful individuals who share their gifts with the world. Get your message out in a bigger way with Savvy's live, professionally recorded shows. Find out more at SavvyBusinessRadio.com. Today we're joined by Sandy Slovak, clinical counselor for more than 35 years. Sandy's faced health battles, and instead of letting it defeat her, she has become more confident than ever. She shares her journey in her newest book, Hello, You're Fabulous, Build Your Self-Esteem for Life. Find out more about Sandy and her latest book at selfesteemsolutions.com. Hi, Sandy. Welcome to Savvy Fitness Radio. It's such a blessing to have you out here this evening. How are you? Oh, I'm just fantastic. And how are you? It's such a great honor to be here. Oh, well, I'm so blessed that we're here today to share your best-selling book, Hello, You're Fabulous, Build Your Self-Esteem for Life. And uh, you've been a clinical counselor for over 35 years, helping people through depression and other issues. And you've also had your own health issues. And you're going to share about, you know, you share this in your book, but you're going to share a little bit about your experiences, share with the audience a little bit about your background, what brought you into the world of clinical counseling, and ultimately writing your book, Hello, You're Fabulous. Well, I'll tell you, it's been a journey. And that's why I feel like I can write this book and be of service to others. I started on the crisis line when I was 16 years old, helping people get through suicidal thoughts, depression, survival of parents doing that kind of stuff, Mm. you name it. And uh, my whole career has been spent in the mental health and addiction field in some sort of size or shape or another. Mm -hmm. And I actually specialized in helping people deal with trauma Mm -hmm. during most of the latter part of that. So, oh man, I've helped parents after they've helped their kids after they've had a suicide, you know, by hanging and they've watched their kids hanging Mm -hmm. from a tree. Can you imagine getting through something like that? No. (laughs) We'll do it. Yeah. Wow. can't imagine how. I mean, I grew up in an abusive household and I've talked about it on the show before. And interesting, I never thought of killing myself. I was very depressed uh, as, you know, because you feel as as a teenager or child that you don't really, you feel sometimes you don't have options. Uh, You're not in a position where you could just leave or go somewhere else or choose a new family. So it's tough. I can totally understand why a child or a teenager or even an adult would choose suicide sometimes because it really feels easier than sometimes when you feel you have no choices. For you, you said you also felt um, that you were dealing with depression and suicide thoughts. How did it work out for you, and why did you feel like that? What you know, what was the circumstances that led you to being depressed and suicidal? Well, I was brought up in the '60s, mm-hmm. and just to give you a little insight, how old I am, you know, and and uh, coming out as a teenager meaning coming out and realizing that I'm a lesbian Mm. uh, when I'm a teenager in a background where being brought up Catholic was Mm -hmm. pretty, you know, that's a pretty big contradiction, especially back then. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know what the church's stance is on it since uh, we've gotten into the 2000s, but I I sure remember feeling like it sure wasn't going to fit. And I had a hard time making adjustment with my family, with my spirituality, Mm. my friends, everything, man. I just didn't feel like I fit in. And I think that's experience for many reasons and for many people. Yeah, absolutely. And for you, when did you begin to realize that, hey, I don't feel the same way as maybe all of my heterosexual friends? And how did you come to terms with that? Were you able to talk to your parents about it? How did it work out for you? You know, I realized that I was different since I was about eight years old. And I started played with dolls very differently. I wanted to be Ken. And it's not because I wanted to be a boy, but just because I wanted to be with Barbie. You know, that kind of thing. So I just didn't quite fit in from a real young age. Mm-hmm. And that's that's tough for most of us in life because all we ever want to do is have people like us and approve of us. Yeah and accept us. That's just such an epidemic in our culture today still, and for so many reasons. 
Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You're right about that being so many reasons. When I was a kid, I was very super shy. And I, I said just a bit ago that I had an abusive household. So I didn't know how to reinteract with people. I kept very to myself, very loner. I felt if I made friends, I might get hurt. So I didn't really trust people. And I often got beat up because, you know, often it's the most shy kids that are picked on because they look like victims and, and then you're your target. So, I, and then I thought, well, there's something wrong with me because not only can I not feel safe at home, I'm scared of getting beat up at school and nothing I do seems to be right. The teacher even asked me once in um, grammar school, one of my favorite teachers said to me, pulled me aside and said, okay, so what are you doing to make these kids want to beat you up? And I, I just bawled out crying because I was like, nothing. I'm not doing anything. So it can be really tough being a, a kid and a teenager and even an adult when you don't have someone to talk to and, and really deal with these feelings when you feel like you don't have you know, when you don't have a way to fit in with society. How have you helped people through that, whether, you know, it's being, you know, coming out as a lesbian or gay or, you know, not fitting in like me because you're shy or you come from an abusive household? What have you found that has helped some of your patients or teenagers? When I am talking with someone who's, who's having a real struggle, mm -hmm. I think you nailed it on the head earlier when you said you didn't feel like you had any options. Mm -hmm. Well, the first thing I do is help people to see things from a different perspective. Mm -hmm. What is it that we want rather than just focusing on what's not working and what we don't want? Because then we feel stuck and trapped mm -hmm. and and we just can't get out of that. But if we can see some other options and look at things differently and start to believe some different stories about our situation, because mm. all of our pain, all mm. of it, and I've heard many of your uh, guests describe this to you before, mm -hmm. um, all of our pain is just because of our thoughts. We believe what we think. Wow. And guess what? Human beings like to be right. <laughs> and, and whether we're our thinking is supporting us or defeating us, we're going to be right about whatever we think. So I help people to think things that are uh, productive and helpful wow. and supportive. Wow. Of me, of ourselves, in other words. Yeah, I, I love that you mentioned that because I had been to psychotherapy many years ago. And it's true, when the psychotherapist would say, just tell me what you're feeling, what you're feeling. And of course, he's not trying to make me wrong or anything. But when he would try to get me to open up to see another perspective, I'd be like, no, 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 my perspective's right. There's no other way to see this. This situation is horrible. There's no way out of this. And I, I totally see where you're at. When you're in it, when you're drenched in whatever catastrophe or crisis you're in, it's really, really hard to see outside of that bubble and that narrow field. Um, it's kind of like, as my one friend called it, tunnel vision. You've just got this super tunnel vision where you can't see anything on either side or around you. Um, if anyone's listening in and maybe right now feeling super depressed or like they're stuck and there's no way out of it, is there any way that they could start to get a handle on seeing a broader perspective and seeing things a little bit more differently? Do you know, you, um, you're absolutely bang on the mark. And when, when I was young, I was fortunate enough to be on the debate team. And I learned that I can argue, mm -hmm. prepare to argue from both sides of the argument. Hmm. So whatever you're arguing for, whether I'm fat, I'm wrong, I'm stupid, I'm, you know, yeah. sometimes we have these beliefs. I'm, I'm trapped, I'm helpless. Yeah. Whatever your belief is, pretend you're on the debating team and just for a minute, prepare the other argument. Uh -huh. Like, no, I'm not. And I'll tell you why. Here's evidence. I did this and see, look it, I did that and I can do that. And then you will find evidence that, you're, that you are the contrary. You'll find more and more and more. But it's, a, it's all about a consciousness. So much of this is unconscious. I mean, it's not on purpose that we bash ourselves or, for that matter, anyone else necessarily. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's all, uh, so bringing most of this stuff to consciousness is, is my job. Wow. And to help you turn it around and tell a different story. Because half of the stuff that I believed about me in my life just wasn't accurate. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I love that you said that, that just maybe taking the, as they call it, devil's advocate, taking the other side of the argument, whatever your stance is on something, going to the opposite side and playing devil's advocate with yourself. Okay, that's my argument. Now I'm going to go to the other side and argue against my side. And for me, I don't know if you've used this in your own discovery or with your patients, but what's worked for me sometimes is journaling. Uh, this one psychotherapist I was telling you about earlier, he had kept trying to get me to see a different perspective and I couldn't. So he told me just to journal my feelings. And I started to do that on this particular subject that we're dealing with. As I was journaling, I started to see, uncover what he was talking about that I couldn't see before. But it was through the journaling about my feelings. And this was about me wanting to please people and get their approval and such. And when I started writing it on paper, I started to see it kind of flashed out before me. But I couldn't see it before I started writing it down so I could actually see what he was talking about. Well, and you're talking about two such different processes, your feelings and your thoughts. Mm. Sometimes we get both of those things very confused. Like, yeah. like I feel that. And whenever you hear somebody say, I feel that, they're coming out with a, uh, a, a thought. I feel that you should do this uh. is a thought. Uh. Uh, rather than, I think you should do this. And I feel sad. Or I feel angry that you want to do this. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, but yeah. You get feelings and thoughts really mixed up a lot of the time. And I help people to, to figure out the difference. You know, what, what's running the bus here? How I feel about it or what I think about it? Because my thought always comes first. I just don't always catch it. Mm. It's not yeah. conscious. Yeah. Because... <laughs> I'm here to tell you, most of what we believe about the big basic things in life mm -hmm. are solidified in us by the time we're eight years old. Now, yeah. think about where you were at in your life mm -hmm. when you were eight years old. What was your view of the world? How did men treat women? Mm -hmm. How did money, you know, happen? Mm -hmm. Was it easy to get? Did you have a hard time working for it? All of those messages, be it men, women, money, society, religion, my self-esteem, who I am, all of those beliefs are set in us and run in the bus mm -hmm. until I decide to have a look at that. We'll be right back after these messages from our sponsor, Neopost. Think about all the time small businesses spend to process and send mail and packages. If we spend just 15 minutes a day doing it, that's more than seven full days a year focused on mailing and shipping. That's crazy! I recently spoke to Neopost, and they told me one of the smartest things to start doing today to save time and money is to use the IS-280 postage meter to handle all our mail processing without ever leaving my office. The IS-280 weighs then automatically tells me what postage amount my mail or package needs. Not only do I pay 6% less to send first class mail, but time is also saved by not having to run to the post office for postage. The IS-280 truly lets me spend more time managing business and less time managing mail. For a limited time, our listeners can get up to six months free by using the promo code SAVVY. Visit neopost280.com slash SAVVY and enter your zip code to see if you qualify. Followed by the promo code SAVVY to lock in six months free. Yeah. And how has it been? Because I've noticed that for me in my own life that it's never just a one-step process. You think, okay, I've gone through certain issues. Maybe it's my love life and that's working. And then you have issues with your career and, okay, you get stabled on that. I, I think it's kind of an ever going journey. It's not like, bam, we've reached this success, confidence, we're there and all areas of our life. I think it's kind of an ever ending process. How has that worked for you? Has there been times where you feel things are stable and then something will happen to bring things off of kilter? What have you seen? Oh, absolutely. Every time I have a real good spiritual conversation with friends or something, I go, you know, I thought that was that whatever particular issue, say it, forgiveness, I yeah. thought that was all cleaned up for me. Yeah. There's obviously still something there, right? Yeah. And so I think the minute I, I'm done, I'm not going to be here. I'm done. <laughs> you know, that might be one way to know when I'm done. Yeah. And uh, believe me, as much as doctors would, would have me believe other stories, I still have way too much stuff to do, and I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> you know, I'm 
you've survived two brain surgeries. Yeah. And I'm here to tell you, mm -hmm. I had a choice. Do I, do I believe the doctors and just go with that? Mm -hmm. Or do I say, you know what? I have stuff to do and tell my body, here we go. Mm -hmm. Because I help, I'll tell you, that's the energy I have. Here we go. Yeah. And it's very exciting. Yeah. And, and that's great to hear because I, I'm sure other people have gone through their own crises and, and, and you feel at the moment you hear whatever the news might be. My son had a car crash. I have this illness that at that moment, why, why me? Why is this happening to me? And you go through that negative self-talk oh, and it can so bring you to a spiral that definitely is not healing. For you, was it like a one-step process? Were you able to see immediately that this is it or was it, did you have to work through that to say that, okay, this is, this is going to be okay. I'm going to be able to work through this. How did that work out when you found out like the second time, oh my gosh, I have to go in for brain surgery? Do you know, I just, have never given it a second thought. It's like, okay, that's the next step here in my journey. <laughs> so, geez, I wonder how I'm going to get through this one. It's almost like watching a motion picture and just can't wait to get to the end, the, you know, the part where everything works out. That's kind of how I've gone through my life. That's and, great. And, uh, you know, it's made it easier. I have gone through many parts of my life prior to 40 where I don't think that way. Mm. And I was suicidal and, oh, my goodness, I've been suicidal for years. That's why I know I can help other people get past all that, that heavy black darkness. Yeah. That, that's how they're feeling. Because I didn't always know how to do this. Yeah. And, and there's a lot of people out there who might feel the same way. What would be your top advice for anyone who feels awfully depressed or feel like I can't go on, I'm stuck? What would be your advice? Yeah, it feels sometimes like going to a counselor just isn't an option. You can barely lift your head off a pillow. Yeah. And what I'm going to say to you is look around at your surroundings and start listing one tiny thing about it that you like or you can appreciate about it. like. I have juice. I have a pillow I love. I love the smell of my pillow. Mm -hmm. um, find things you appreciate. Mm -hmm. Find things you love about the people who do support you. Or mm -hmm. find things you appreciate about the people who support you or the people who don't support you. And start looking for things like, oh my goodness, the sun's out today. I can be aware of the sunshine. Yeah. Or I can be aware of the beautiful cleansing rain, whichever the case may be. Yeah. I can find something to appreciate in anything. Wow. And this recalls for me, uh, many years ago, we had a, um, a guest on who said that one of the things she got most from growing up in Japan was that the whole culture is very much based on gratitude, that it's very much ingrained into the culture to have gratitude for everything. And she said that stays with me today, even as an adult, always, no matter how bad I'm feeling, to think, to look around and find what to be grateful for. It's such a beautiful thing to remember to do and incorporate that into your life it doesn't necessarily have to be an exercise in a journal, but just to remember to incorporate that some way in your life. Yes, and I don't, I hope your listeners aren't thinking that I'm just pure Pollyanna about it. <laughs> because it is not an easy thing to think, to find something to appreciate in a bad, bad state. Mm -hmm. And I get that. But I just know that it's about energy and momentum. Our whole body is about energy and moving energy. And in order to change a state to feeling fabulous, you have to start with feeling a little better and a little better. And then a, a little bit better becomes a little better. And, and you feel a little stronger and noticing and you can actually put one foot in front of the other. Do you hear the power in yeah. my heart yeah. when I say it that way? Hmm. It's really important to just start the process, the momentum, mm. because it builds. And I promise you, I promise you, it builds. If I continue looking for things that I'm liking and thinking about things I'd rather be doing and being and having, rather than kind of complaining about what I'm in and have, and mm -hmm. you know, it'll, it'll turn around. I swear it will. 
Yeah, I, I get you. And and it's interesting that what I've just took away from you is that thinking about it bit by bit, if you look at someone else around you and say, well, look at where she's at. She's where I want to be. And she's at the ultimate goal or he or she, then you're going to beat yourself up because- Oh my goodness. Comparison is our nemesis, darling. Oh my, yes. Yes. Looking at what others have or the situation will just kill you. Look at where you are now and just finding one thing, get on, as you said, just starting with that one thing you feel better about can be just the one more thing that you can add tomorrow and then the next day and the next day. It's, it's, what do you call it? Um, you had mentioned it, compiling on top of each other where you can start to see the benefits of it. It's not a, a one step process. It's an ongoing process that is not overnight. It takes time. It's energetic momentum. Absolutely. Mm. And this, and this takes time to turn around. Yes. Yeah. What were, when you wrote your book, who are you hoping to get? What, what are you hoping that people take from it? Actually, I wrote the book back in 2008 as a, as a workbook for a four week workshop that I did on self-esteem. So the book is written that way. It's in four sections. It's talk, 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 homework. (laughs) <laughs> for four sections. Mm. And so there's activities and discussion points all the way through. It's a manual. Mm. And it's written for anybody who wants to self-direct or come hop on the course with me at some point or get one-on-one coaching coaching and work through the book. Yeah. You know, Absolutely. it's uh, it's just a guide. It's a guidepost and exercises that are in it that are helpful. That's great. And and I think one thing I see missing from a lot of women in particular is self-esteem. Uh, I know myself included, I've often tried to please people uh, and get them to like me and just as not being self-confident. And it really hurts women in, in particular, I, I find. I see, I, feel, I see men a lot more confident often than women. Why do you think that is actually, Sandy? Well, I hate to be too pigeonholy about the whole uh, yeah. men women thing yeah, yeah, yeah. i tend to agree with you that women certainly are the majority yeah. but yeah i've talked to a heck of a lot of guys out there who <laughs> struggle for such different reasons mm. and us gals can for the same for the same thing for the self esteem issues wow and it's it's purely an epidemic you know mm-hmm. um listen to yourself if somebody says let's play a game Every single one of us listeners has a different gut reaction to that. Hmm. We're either going, yay, I love games, or yeah, I I like puzzles. Uh Or we're going, oh my gosh, how do I get out of here? (laughs) Where's my my escape route? (laughs) And everywhere in between, we all have our gut response to something like that. Hmm. So how I do one thing. Mm -hmm. It's how I'm going to do life. It's how I'm going to do everything. So Mm -hmm. again, it's about uncovering these messages that are so solid in us. We don't even know we have a reaction to a question like that. Yeah. Right. But we all do. Yeah. And are you in? Are you playing with me? Right. No, I get you. And when I heard you say, I was like, oh, I love games. Which one are we talking about? (laughs) Right. Right. And there's other people that were just mortified and want to get off the call right now kind of deal. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, it depends. Uh, my favorite game, oh, it's a game where you do all, cranium, cranium, that's it, where you do, uh, you can do drama, you can draw stuff, you can, you know, model stuff with clay. I love it because you use so many different senses. You could use your sight, your feel, your touch. And it's not just reading questions and getting the right question or something like that. And I kind of like bringing that. But some of my friends who are super shy are like, heck no, I don't want to have to act something out or, or, you know, do something with clay. It's like, (laughs) so yeah, it depends on on who you are as a person as well and how you express yourself in the world. Well, it doesn't that say something brilliant though about you that you described yourself historically as someone very shy Mm -hmm. and now look at you go, girl, you're on national radio, for goodness sakes. <laughs> you know, you're, uh, you're acting out all sorts of clues. This is how you do life. You have found a way to change those real fundamental messaging mm-hmm. and messages that you had about you when you were a youngster. So congratulations and good for you. Any of us can do it. 
Yeah, absolutely. I agree with you because I was that super shy child back in high school. And I bet anyone back then would never dream. I would never dream. I was do- I would be doing what I'm doing today as well. I'm blessed. And it's true. Anyone can find their own gifts and talents and bring into the world and to the fullest extent if they really work through all of this. And your book is a great way to get started. Hello, you're fabulous. Where can they get a copy? Well, it's on Amazon, and I am not sure how long it's going to stay at the price that it is. So go ahead and click on Amazon and look up Hello, You're Fabulous, or under my name, Sandy Slovak. Or you can even go to my website, and it's selfesteemsolutions.com. Fabulous. Well, this has been such a blessing. I'm so grateful to have you join us tonight to share your great wisdom. Thank you, Sandy, for coming to Savvy Business Radio. Thanks so much. Quinty Aviation T-Shirt Art, a one-stop shop solution for all your graphic art needs, from logos, business cards, book covers, and banners. Contact Winty.com today in order to find out how your design can become a reality.